next um, presentation. I'm sure we had a good time with uh, Mrs. Tonia Uzo. Yeah. Now, taking us in the second phase of this topic is a very distinguished fellow of our chapter and um, a member of the Institute of Strategic Management. And uh, two days ago, or three days ago, was his birthday. Please, let's uh, give him a happy birthday clap. He's 60. It's not easy. 62. Wow. God bless you, sir, and keep you, and increase you, and many more fruitful years ahead. All right. Our pastor, his name is Pastor Tony Oluwa Tony Alabi. Is the President and Chief Executive Officer of Integrated Catering Company Limited, owner of the brand name, The Promise, born at Ibaje, Ibaje, Ife Lodun Local Government Area of Kwara State on 10th March 1962. He had his primary school education at Baptist Primary School, Ibaja, from 1969 to 1975 and attended Baptist Grammar School Ibaja as well as well between 1975 and 1980. Pastor Oluwa Alabi is a 1987 graduate of Food Science and Technology from the Federal Polytechnic Adoikiti. His experience and well-versed in catering management with over 30 years cognate experience in the hospitality industry. He started his catering career with Navana Restaurant Newi in Anambra State in July 1988, as a restaurant manager from where he moved to Panach Chinese Continental Restaurant in Rivers Lane, GRA, River Lane, GRA Enugu in 1990, employed as a restaurant manager. His experience proved relevant to the success, successful takeoff of the Genesis Restaurant in Enugu in 1991, where he worked as a pioneer manager and contributed to the historic opening of the Genesis restaurant, Port Harcourt, in November 1994, 1994, where he rose to become the general manager of the company before eventually disengaged voluntarily in September 1997. In the last quarter of 1997, he signed a management contract agreement with Alliant Trust and Systems Limited to provide management and technical assistance in the execution of catering services housekeeping and other related services for Shell at Ikang Village Guest House, Shell Residential Area, Port Accord, where he doubled as Executive Director of Operations and the team lead from 1999, 1997 to 1999. By the year 2020, he decided to start his own business by registering Integrated Catering Company as an enterprise to provide catering services to corporate and high worth individuals. The company was limited by shares in February 2003 with share capital base of 10 million. With a total commitment and determination to succeed, he opened the first outlet of the promised restaurant fast food at Teti Agri Road on the 27th of July 2002. And today, the, the fortunes of the business has grown in leaps and bounds with 28 additional and functional outlets currently operational in Port River State Bayesa and Lagos States. The company is also a key catering services provider for offshore operations and remote sites of major oil and gas companies operating in the Niger Delta region. He's a distinguished academician with several academic laurels and prizes to his credit. He won the Federal Government Talented Student Award, Ovaltine Nigeria Limited Award, Elderson Nigeria Limited Award, Box Nigeria Limited Award for being the best student in HND 2 final examination of the Department of Food Science, Food Technology. He's also a major as the overall best student in the Department of Food Technology and the Faculty of Technology as a whole in 1987, graduating, graduating here. He is the first alumni of the Federal Polytechnic Adoquity to be conferred with the prestigious fellow of the institution, FFPA. He also has several honors in his credit an award of excellence in recognition of his innovations, innovation management prowess and service to humanity. He's an alumni, alumnus of Heta International Development Center, New York, Cochrane Fellow of Penn State University, United States of America, a Paul Harris Fellow of Rotary Club International, a Fellow of Institute of Corporate Administration of Nigeria, a Fellow of Institute of Strategic Management 
Nigeria Chartered, and John Maxwell Con Certified Trainer on Leadership. Mr. Oluwa, Pastor Oluwa Tony Alabi is the immediate past publicity secretary for Accord Chamber of Commerce, Industry, Mines, and Agriculture for SIMA. Pastor Oluwa Tony Alabi is a community leader saddled with the responsibility of pivoting the affairs of Ibaje community in Ife Lodun local government area of Kwara State in the capacity of president of the Ibaje Progressive Union National Executive Council since 2019. He is married to Reverend Ms. Rebecca Ezine Alabi and they are blessed with four children, namely Olatunde, Abiodun, Kolade, and Ayomide. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for that impressive CV as we welcome the pastor, Tony Alabi himself. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, my chapter chairman, Mr. Nathan Excellence. I want to use this opportunity to welcome each and every one of us to this meeting. I know that subsequently you have had nice time with uh, one of our fellow who just finished our own session now, Mrs. Tonia. Um, it's a very great thing to meet with very beautiful, delectable people from NDDC this morning. And uh, we're just going to start by getting to know each other. You just have something read about me. My name is Olua Tonia Labi. I work with Integrated Catering Company Limited, The Promise. And uh, sir, please. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Stanley Akop Mwane from the Directorate of EHSS NDDC. My name is Faith Newsom in UIDW. My name is Ihejiri Kaogochi Ann. Austin AJ is my name. Disputant conflict. It's Siri. That is my name. Aisharu. My name is Grace Mukuru Essie from Wari. Okay. Lina Okara, Commercial and Industrial Development. Emma Nachukuji, Procurement. Awe Harriet, Agriculture and Fisheries. La Larry Trelli, Agric and Fish. Promise Chima, Procurement. Daniel Ogenevo, Procurement. Jato Mary Research. Enoque, Environmental Protection and Control. Omashe Borish FM Uyowa. Delta State Office Internal Audit. Ajagbe Basi Procurement Unit. Efion okay. Catherine, Youth and Sports. Faith Lady Procurement. Before I introduce myself, in 2002, when the promise started, I was one of your first customers. In Agri Road. In Agri Road. But you didn't see my first staff. My <laughs> first staff ever is here in this office. Who was it? And, uh, that's the second. Really? That's my second. That's my first secretary and the first staff really? of the promise. After my wife, she's the first wife. Really? First staff. So, so you, you are, are the first are, customer. Yes, I was the she's first customer. She's my first staff. Because I was there. She was my secretary. Yeah, at Agri Road. Uh, the you first see? ever. Come that on. was 1999. Uh, Thereabout. Yes. Yes. Uh, Yes, go ahead. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm proud of you. Thank you. My name is Deya Ala, Procurement Unit. Okay. My name is Esther Onengufuri Benibo, EHSS. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I needed to do that because it's not everybody I know that is in this uh, all this morning. I know I can recognize my. Uh, a brilliant lawyer, uh, Mrs. Uh, Okara, Lina Okara, apart from that, that we are fellows, both of us are fellows of the Institute. She's been instrumental in facilitating partnership between the Promise and NDDC. 
and uh, maybe in the course of this uh, program, we'll be able to talk about it more. I'm very glad this morning to really be privileged to give this talk. We have been told what VOCA is, but do we really know why we are here this morning? Why are we sent? Why, why NDDC has thousands and thousands of staffs, but why should it be that we that are here are the ones that are sent for this training? Because this moment we are talking about is a volatile moment, full of uncertainty, full of very unpredictable moments. But NDDC must continue to survive. So the survivor and the future of NDDC is in your hand. That's why you are here this morning. The continual survivor of NDDC, irrespective of the uncertainty, the ambiguity, the complexity, NDDC must continue to survive because it has a mandate to transform the Niger Delta region. And how well it is done, how well it's able to deliver on that mandate is in your hand. And also in ensuring that this great agency is able to deliver on his uh, mandate. I was listening to the news day before yesterday, I was here yesterday, and I saw the exec director of project in Elele trying to monitor a, an abandoned rice farm fully, that was fully functional but was shut down. And they were saying, no, we can't continue like this. This rice farm was bounced back. Because now that there is scarcity of food, nobody can ever believe that Nigeria will be in need of food forever. One, we may not have enough, but it was never a concern. But the uncertainty in the world and uncertainty in Nigeria due to combination of several factors has made Nigerians to be anxious where food is concerned. The war in Ukraine, we are just coming out of the recession, the COVID pandemic, I mean pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And um, we enter, that is a situation that turned the whole world into crisis. As if that was not enough, we enter into Russian Ukraine war and there was uh, what can call um, inability for Ukraine to send us grains, wheat, maize, rice, and all that. And everything went a wire. And we are now starting to look inward. Nigeria never bothered before. What do we do with our food? No state has ever said you can't send food to the west, you can't send food to the east, you can't send all our food must remain. But the uncertainty in the world today has led to some drastic step that has been taken. But how do we navigate out of all this uncertainty? that will keep our organization, NDDC, relevant to the situation in Niger Delta and Nigeria as a whole. I think that should be what will be engaging us. Then we narrow it down to individuals. Assuming I come into my office this morning and they said, work is finished. What do I do? Where do I go from here? Because I can really tell you, nothing is certain again in the world. There is no assurance that you have tomorrow, tomorrow will be certain. We trust tomorrow in the hand of God. But we should not trust tomorrow only in the hand of God. We should do some things that make our tomorrow safe and secure. And those are some of the things to we'll be looking at. Uh, VUCA, in the context of business, you know what it is. You know, VUCA is an, is an acronym that stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. Qualities that make situation difficult to analyze and unpredictable. And it's even make the uh, situation very difficult to respond to. You wake up this morning with this situation in your hand. By the time you are breaking again tomorrow, is a different ball game. Let's look at the Nigerian parameters, the indices. From the unemployment rate to interest rate to exchange rate, we will know that things are no longer the same. Some years back, maybe last year or two years ago, before the advent of this new administration, dollar to Naira was about 500, 600. But today, as of this morning, Naira to dollar is 1,609 Naira 20 Kobo, as of this morning. You can see the gap. You can see the unpredictability in our economy. Interest rate, the same thing. Some banks are charging about 30% now. Only DBN, only BOI is charging 9%. DBN is charging between 12 and 15% for DBN loan, Development Bank of Nigeria. But even at that, 
when the bank gets the loan at 12%, they had about 10% to it, and they charge you about 25%. So there are so many unpredictable situations in our economy, and instead of an economy to, to be improving, everything is being done by this government to turn it around. It's not happening because you see the indices are not hard enough. They are not hard enough together. They are not hard enough at all. Now, we have not even talked about the energy crisis. Before the advent of this government, diesel was about 600, 300, 400. Today, a liter of diesel is 1,500 naira in Lagos. 1,565 in Podakot for a liter of diesel. A kilowatt of electricity before now was about 49, 50. A kilowatt electricity now is about 65. These have telling effect on businesses, and that is why businesses are closing. Now, the mainstay of every economy is SME. The mainstay of every economy is the SME. Whenever the SME of any, any country is troubled, that company will begin to experience crisis. Now, we have the bigger companies, multinationals, the big manufacturing company that they solely depended on imported uh, raw materials and they buy it with dollars. How will a company that rely on goods from abroad, raw material from abroad, be able to survive now? They combine that with energy crisis, they combine that with the cost of uh, diesel, they combine that with workforce, and you discover that many are closing. Now, the, how do we survive this terrible situation? But let me tell you one thing. Difficult situation, farming season, crisis in the economy, in the whole world, is not breaking news, it's not news. One thing we must know is that it is not a breaking news. This started from the time of our father, Abraham, Genesis 12, 10, sorry. I just want you to have the assurance that we can navigate through it. We can actually navigate through it and remain afloat in business and even imagine stronger we know how many companies went down as a result of COVID. They never recovered it today. Even some churches went down. They never opened their, 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 their house, I mean, the house of worship again to today. We will be looking at why the day went down and why is it that some businesses are still thriving? Because the situation we are talking about today with this beautiful acronym, VOCA, has been there as a season of lack and want in every uh, generation. After Abraham's time in Genesis 12:10, he went down to Egypt. During the time of Isaac, the son, there was famine too. And Isaac looked at what the dad did. He also about to leave for Egypt. And God told him, don't go down to Egypt. Stay in this place. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is that the success or the method or the approach that worked two years ago may not work now. So we should, be, we should have an open mind to situation. Usually human beings, when there are situations in a country or in an economy or in a workplace, what did we do before? Can we repeat it? Because of the dynamics in the economy and in times and in technology, the situation, the solution that worked two years ago may not work again. So when Isaac decided to move to Egypt, just like his father did, the angel of the Lord told him, no, don't go down to Egypt. Stay in the land of Gera. Do your business there. Do what you have been doing. And in that Genesis chapter 26 for Isaac, he became very prosperous. So what are we saying? We should be open-minded to approach. It's not a one-fit-all solution, please. It's not a one-fit-all solution. Our heart should be open to see how we can navigate through very difficult times. Difficult times are not new. VUCA is just an acronym that stands for volatility, but the summary of it is that it's a difficult times. Not just in Nigeria, please, even in advanced economy. Oh, I saw one video clips of um, a man that was lamenting. He just finished buying fuel in Europe. And he said, I spent 59 euros in buying, no, 109 euros in buying fuel. Now, why are we complaining in Nigeria that fuel is expensive? Which means whatever is happening outside the country 
is also, is, whatever is happening in Nigeria is also happening outside the country. But because in that place, they have different means, what they have put in place to cushion the effect of what the people might suffer as a shock of the VUCA, they are not really feeling the way we are feeling it. Thank God for technocrats that are sitting down in this room this morning. I know many of us are technocrats. We may not be businessmen, but there are some ways, there are some things we can adopt as a strategy that can help us in our office to be able to keep NDDC going. And to also be sure that all the programs and plan of NDDC are implemented. And we should begin to run NDDC as a business entity. That is the only way by which it can be sustained for a very long time. We are running it as an agency that heavily dependent on being spoon fed. If all those resources that NDDC has invested in, they have allowed it to run independently as a business. Today, whether federal government give you money, whether they release your budget, whether they do so or they do that, NDDC will continue because there has been a lot of investment NDDC did. Actually, the rice oil is there, the fish is done, the agriculture is there. So many empowerment that has been done. I think the approach of running NDDC uh, as a business, we pay both the staff and the, the organization in a long while. So we said, we can uh, say, okay, so how to mitigate this quality can really improve the strategy of leader and lead to a better outcome. So what we need to address is that this VUCA is, is, a, is, is something that we can't do away with because we have to live with it. Now, dealing with it is what makes the difference. So in dealing with it, resilience is key. Resilience is key. Every organization must have what you call a strength to weather the storm, to weather the storm, to weather the storm. It's like when we are flying and suddenly an aircraft runs into turbulence. There is a lot of panic in the aircraft. There's a lot of panic among the passengers. In fact, you see some people speaking in tongues. At that point in time, you see some people holding the, the, the leg of somebody. Uh, I, was in one, I was in one, I was flying to Lagos with my first son to write Covenant University exams some years back. And we had to take off from uh, Air Force Base because International Airport was closed. Omagua was closed. So, and then, um, I came in, my son was given a different seat, I was given a different seat. It was a smaller aircraft that was not supposed to fly more than 19,000. The lady that came in to sit by my side, and because she was beautiful and elegant, I greeted her. She just even didn't answer. <laughs> so she sat down. I was trying to get familiar and be friendly. She didn't even answer me. Oh, wow. Usually when, I, when somebody sits with me, I share the, I want to know who you are, what I can do for you, and what Christ can do for you. So the girl was just like um, a big girl. So I kept to myself. When this aircraft ran into turbulence, she heard my leg. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and the aircraft was dropping. It was dropping badly. Because it has to drop from 22,000 to about 19,000. And drop again to about 17,000. So, turbulent time, how do you survive it? You see that the pilot needs to use experience. They will need experience. They will need wrestling. The experience, the knowledge comes into play to survive turbulent times. Experience, knowledge, and understanding of the situation is required to survive turbulent times. And one good thing about turbulent time is that it doesn't send notice. Ah, I am coming. No. Just one policy statement from Tinubu is what led us to where we are today. Subsidy is gone. See where that statement. There was no notice. There was nothing like, don't worry, um, um, we are going to. There was no notice. That is how VUCA is. Very unpredictable. Something you did not plan for. Something you didn't even anticipate. Something you didn't even prepare for, but suddenly it comes. Now, as a leader, how do you respond? So that you can remain afloat. So that you can remain in business. So that you not be swallowed up by the situation, rather. 
you will tower above the situation. Those are the things we are going to be looking at this morning. But my own, from the business angle of it, from the business angle of it, because I want us to see what we are doing as business. Even today, we are told that running a church is a business. Hmm? So if you run it well, your ministry will do well. If you run it anyhow, it will, to our agency, which is one of the biggest agencies in Nigeria, with one of the biggest vision ever seen, a bold step to transform the entire Niger Delta, nine Niger Delta states, we should be able to change our approach in running NDCT and begin to see it as running a business. Just like running Shell, running Chevron, running any of these big corporations, we can actually do it like that. So we need to know how to go about it and what to do. So resilience organization had the capacity to resist, to absorb, and respond to the sudden changes and challenges of the financial crisis and back, back, bounce back faster and stronger in subsequent years. What it means is that in the course of your doing business, begin to build capacity, begin to build reserve, begin to build capacity because what works today may not work tomorrow. One single policy can wipe away your whole profit. See the price of items today in the market. You bought rice when it was um, 18,000, 19,000. You finish selling it, you want to go and buy again, they say it's 78,000. Tell me, how much more money do you need? So if you use all your reserve to buy it, can you get the money back? So we need to build resilience. Only resilient organization that has the capacity to resist, to absorb, and to respond to the sudden changes and challenges of the financial crisis and bounce back faster and stronger in subsequent years. What is VUCA? VUCA is crisis in the economy, crisis in the nation, crisis in the world. And if I may shock you, it is not peculiar to Nigeria. Let us just remove that mind. If we have brothers and sisters that travel abroad under this Japa syndrome, ask them, how is life in Canada? How is life in London? How is life in the United States? They will tell you it is not a bed of roses. If they want to be honest with you, they will tell you, my dear, it is not a bed of roses. So, however, such organization, which I want NDDC to transit to, has the capacity to move quickly and flexibly, decisively from that situation to really be able to get to the point of stability. You need to quickly, you see that after the tumblings of the, air, I mean, of the aircraft, then you see there is stability. And the pilot will announce, please put on your seat, uh, uh, put your seatbelt, we'll soon be landing, and everybody's mind come down. But in actual situation, what is important is that what resilient, what did you have in stock to cushion the effect of this turbulence? That is what we are to work out together this morning so that we know where we are going and to keep things going. Because situation will always come. Unpredicted, unplanned form will always come. It's part of our daily living. So we should be psychologically prepared to confront it and not to run away from it. And even you can't even run away with it because it's with you. You don't wish away problem. You solve problem. And there is no problem you wish away that goes away. No. That is why strategic thinking is key. And that is why you need to quickly engage some strategic thinking to be able to confront a problem that is confronting us. So what do we need to do as business? The number one thing I said is that you need to build resilience over time. The promise today is about 25, 24 years old as a brand. Over the years, we don't see anything that can make the promise to go away. No, we can't. We, we don't see what will make it to, to go away because over time we build resilience. When we started in year 2020, in 2022, when we opened the first outlet, we knew that we don't have anything to contend with the powers that be then in business. We talk about the like of Mr. Biggs, the like of Kim Fishers. So what do we do? We enter the market quietly, no noise. There was no advert. There was no publicity. There was, because if you, as a new brand, you come with all those noise, all those publicity, what, you have come, what the signal you are sending to those that are established as a brand is that we are here to compete and contend with you. 
and they will use their muzzle to muzzle you in. So what do we do? We saw that in Coca-Cola. We saw that in some of these big corporations. Coca-Cola doesn't need additional build. They only buy and destroy all the bottles of their competitors, and that company will die, naturally. They did that to Time Cola. They did that to uh, Limca in Onicha. Any, any carbonated drinks that come into the market and is gaining market share, the first thing Coca-Cola will do is to contain it. And how do they contain it? They will tell all their dealers, when they come, buy all their products and pay for it with the bottle. We are coming to refund you the money. So when Coca-Cola drop their, their drinks, they will carry the drinks of their competitors, both the bottle and the drinks, and send the bottle to their Ugeli plant where they make bottles for them. They will destroy the old bottles and turn it to Coca-Cola bottle. And at the end of the day, when you send, when you send all these, uh, you as a producer, you are happy. Your people are making money. But the bottles are not coming back. <laughs> so you are spending more money making bottles than what you are making from the product. So your cost is not balanced. At the end of the day, you close down. This is what major competitor, major corporations does. They won't allow the small one to breathe. So when you are entering the market, you enter quietly. So we entered the market quietly in 2002. And immediately we opened, July 27, 2002, Mr. Beast came from the Azikwe Road, which is their head office, and they came to buy every of our product. They went back to their office and they said, a new fast food just opened at number 30 Agri Road. But not to worry, they will soon fizzle out like others. That was the conclusion of their management. They wrote to management. Immediately they did that. What did we do? We went back and changed all the recipes. We changed the quality standard. So they went with one assumption. We bring the new reality. So we began to sell. Under six months, we took over 44% of their market. Then Lagos started asking them, what is happening? What is happening? What is happening? Why are your customer base dropping? Why are your sales dropping? So when that question was asked, they were honest enough to tell the head office, that company that was opened, that new fast food at number 30 Agri Road that we thought we, we fizzled out, is not fizzling out, oh. in fact, it's responsible for this. The next information, the next directive to them was that, contain them at all costs. And when they gave that mandate, they were ready to release as much money as possible. They said they should lose, look for the next plot to us and come and put their outlet there. They couldn't get number 31. We are number 30. They couldn't get number 32. But they got number 33, Agri Road. And they started building that outlet day and night. They paid twice the price of it for that land. And they were building it day and night. And they finished it under, two, under 30 days. And when they finish, they open. My staff were like, how ah, are you going to survive this? I said, just keep doing what you are doing and doing it well. So consistency in quality and doing, and doing what you are doing well is what we see you through in turbulent times, in challenging times, because competition will always be there. And by the time they, they came, they opened, usually when a new place comes, everybody rushed down to it. And after some time, they wait, they said, feel loose. We still prefer this place. One, we have a pricing and advantage. Two, we have a quality advantage. So we have availability advantage. So those three things are able to help us in retaining customership. So what we are doing is that what resilience are you building for it when the turbulent times comes? So the next thing you need to do is to protect your supply chain. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Thank God for NDDC. In each of the departments, at least I may not know much about uh, other directorate, but I know about CID, because I'm working directly with CID, right from the time of uh, Usen, Oga, Oga Usen. Uh, I knew that, um, because we have a, a partnership we are trying to, um, in empowering the Niger Delta youth in the area of catering. We've gone far with it, and I'm sure that this new administration, this new um, leadership will be able to see that project, see the light of the day. What we are doing is that if you are running a business, 
You don't put all your eggs in one basket. No matter how reliable a supply may be, when turbulent time comes, it's not the same story. It's not the same, uh, 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 it, it won't be the same. Take for instance, there is crisis of chicken in Nigeria as we speak. There is serious crisis of, the same way there is crisis of grain, there is crisis of chicken. So every day, when you get to this supplies I don't have, when you have this supply I don't have. So you don't keep your eggs in one basket if you must so, so, I mean, survive on certain times. You must have multiple suppliers that you are getting chicken from this person, you are getting this item from this, you're getting the, let them be minimum two or three so that if this person messed up as a result of pressure he does not have, your, your business is not crumbled. Your business is not crumbled. There are so many international challenges to this. There are so many things that are coming from Ukraine that is compromised today that you can't get because of the war. There are so many things that the, the China company are, are struggling today. The economy of China has slowed down dramatically because raw material are not coming frequently from where it's supposed to come again. As a result of changes in some African country, they are tightening the news on the easy raw material China used to get. They are not getting what they used to get again. So all this uncertainty, you must not put your egg in one basket. You must be able to have alternative options to get supply of raw materials to keep your business going. Don't put your egg in one basket. It will help you survive in turbulent times. If A does not have, B we have. If B will not have, C we have. D will not have. It's good to maintain relationship. I'm not doubting it. I'm not stopping us. Good relationship with your customers, I mean, with your suppliers, but ensure that it's not just one suppliers that you keep. It will enable you to supply, I mean, to survive in turbulent time. So you need to protect your supply chain. Then review your contracts. Please don't enter into any contract that does not leave you with options of changing prices because in VUCA time, nothing is certain. You get to market today, the market women will not tell you, uh, I'll give you notice to set tomorrow. In fact, there was a day we wanted to go and buy something in the morning. And the man said, if you did not pay before 3 p.m., I cannot guarantee this price. I can only tell you this, it was about 11 a.m. He was telling us that if you did not pay before 3 p.m., the price will surely change. Market people respond immediately to price, price change. But you as a business person, the people you are giving the food to, what kind of contract did you give to them? Does it allow flexibility that as the market changes, you can change? Or you are subsidizing them when things have changed? There is no way you'll be able to survive or remain if you are selling below your cost. So when you are signing contract, make it flexible enough that you can change your prices that you can change your prices, that you can tell them and say, look, things are no longer the same. I need to apply for a change. I did that with some of the corporate companies that we are serving, the like of SPDC. We told them we can no longer continue serving them. We send in a letter, and they quickly consider it. The same thing with Bikaujis. When we signed the contract with them, chicken was like 800 naira we are buying per leg. Now chicken is about 1,350 per, per one leg of chicken from the supplier. And we told them no. You are paying 2,000 naira for chicken and rice and salad. It's no longer going to work. Please, don't stick to doing business when you are underpricing yourself. Don't, don't be tied by contract that because I've signed this contract. I know some of your contractors too in NDDC. They will tell you, you gave them a rule contract to do with uh, cement. And now cement was uh, maybe 5,000 then. They must quickly come back to you and say, no, Siemens is now 15,000. What do we do about this? So uh, if you don't want the project to be abandoned, what do you do? You begin to renegotiate. As a businessman, you must be able to leave an open end to be able to amend your pricing template with the people you are doing business with. So pricing terms are important to allow you to increase if necessary. And you should also have if a company you are supplying is having challenges, please exit. Don't die with the company. Don't say he has been my, uh, we, we've been long time, uh, we, they were, you don't leave people during bad time, is it for better or for worse? It's only marriage that is for better or for worse. 
please, it's not if a company is having challenge, it can't pay the workers, it can't pay for the supply. What do you do? You just go and quickly tell them, sorry, we will come back when things are better. You are not going to kill yourself. But if you say, ah, oh, it's my friend that is the owner. We are being childhood friends. Don't be sentimental in uncertain time. The only thing that is real is reality in uncertain time. So face the reality. This company is struggling. And you are still giving them food. Every month when you submit invoice, first month, two months, three months, four month invoices, they couldn't pay. And you still said they are our good customers. They are no longer your good customer. Before you know it, you might be able to. So ensure that you have the option to terminate a contract. If your customer financial aid looks like it might be struggling before they enter into a formal insolvency event. And once they declare bankruptcy, you have lost everything. Once they declare bankruptcy, you don't have any right under the law to take them to court if they are no longer serving. Because there is nothing you can do about it. So please, manage the term of your contract to reflect these three situations. Ability to be able to change your price. An ability to exit if there is need. Instead of you to go down with the company going down. Please, in turbulent time, safeguard your growth and look for opportunity and identify opportunities. When other companies are struggling, it is time for you to acquire them quickly. Just pick them up like cherry picking. You pick them up. We've done that a lot in the past. Where we did that, oh, this person is about to close. We did that to Alex, Alex, um, Alex restaurant, it used to be where Standard Charter Bank, be, beside Diamond Bank, along Abba Road, when they were rounding up, we took over everything they have, the asset and everything, because it was offered to us very cheap. And we used it to open our own two other outlets. The asset we bought from them, we were able to use it to open two outlets. Um, their their uh, kitchen equipment, their utensils and everything. So what I'm trying to say is that when there are challenges, turbulent times, it's also an opportunity time. Spot out the opportunities. Look for companies that you are in the same business that are struggling and quickly take them over. You are going to buy it like for like one third of the price, what you are supposed to do if they want to sell normally. So there must also be, a, it also provided you the chance to step into a competition place if they are struggling. You can quickly take them over and uh, change them to your own and revive it. Because you are resilient, you are strong, your, um, your, um, your capacity to quickly take them over uh, is there to help. Uh, they also will thank you because uh, you have bailed them out of a struggling uh, situation. So please, let's look at opportunities in turbulent time. It can also be a growth avenue for us as businessmen. It can be a growth avenue for us as businessmen. Turbulent times throw up opportunities. A lot of opportunities are thrown up. There are people that when they are facing turbulent times, they begin to sell their, some of their assets. They begin to sell land. What will buy it in turbulent times, not what will buy it in normal times. So ensure that you take advantage of those opportunities to grow your business. It's a means by which you can grow your business. Turbulent time offers, offers that opportunity to grow, to grow our business through opportunities that it brings. Now, surviving at times, you need to look at your expenses. This is not the time for frivolities. What are the things you can cut back? What are the things you can avoid? I can tell you, Nigeria love enjoyment. It does, it's not limited to any tribe, even though the Yorubas have been given the Owambe stigma. Uh, <laughs> but I can tell you, Nigerians generally, we love enjoyment. We love enjoy, we love parties. We love parties. But I can tell you in turbulent time, it's not party time. It is being serious and business-minded. How do you cut down on your cost? Every Kobo matters in turbulent times. Every Kobo matters. Your eyes must be on every Kobo. In fact, your eyes must be on your cash flow. The money that come in and the one that going out. If you have left it for your chief financial officer before in the company, you will take charge of it. 
You know every cobo that comes in. You know about everybody that every cobo that goes out. Because your survival depends on your ability to monitor your cash flow. Your survival depends on your ability to manage and monitor your cash flow. So you look at your expenses and see where you can cut back. I can tell you, the first casualty in a turbulent time, on a challenging time for business, is on traveling and entertainment. You cut down on traveling, you cut down on entertainment. Because these are a lot of ways by which companies uh, company expended a lot of their resources. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God for Team. Thank God for Skype. A lot of meetings that should take you to Abuja or bring your staff from Lagos for a meeting. Bring, you can actually have it on Zoom. Cut down on those expenses. Let everyone join with their laptop for the meeting. The CEO will still address them. And everybody joins. Thank God for the opportunity to even be able to work from our houses. These are ways by which you can cut down on our expenses. Because at this point in time, in turbulent time, the cobo you save is the cobo you hand. Every cobo save is every cobo hand. So you must ensure that you put that into your consciousness. So by minding your expenses and see where you can cut back so that you can survive the turbulent times. One more important thing to do during turbulent time is how do I increase my revenue? You know why it's important to look for ways to increase revenue during turbulent times? Because everybody is cutting back. The situation is affecting both the civil servant, is affecting both the uh, people that are in the informal sector, is affecting the literate and the illiterate. So you see everybody cutting back. Every family is minding their business. Everybody is trying to cut back on entertainment, on this and on that and that. So you as a businessman, so that your business will not be badly impacted, look for other ways by which you can increase your revenue. Look for other ways by which you can increase your revenue. When at the beginning of this year, we look at what we are doing in Lagos, and we said, yes, we are taking care of all SPDC's operations, both at the Ikeja office and at their marina office. But what about if Shell wake up tomorrow and said, we don't want you again? So what happened to the staff? And what happened to all the equipment that you have invested on? The building, the warehouse, and everything. What happened? Then we decided we need to increase our revenue base for Lagos by about 25 to 30%. By going on Childeck and Glovo. These are two online sales channels that wherever you can be in Lagos, if you're on Childeck and Glovo, you can get your food in the, uh, they, they, they try as much as possible to have a lot of delivery people that can deliver your food in five, 10 minutes. So we decided to bring everything about the promise on those platforms so that both the island and the mainland people can have the opportunity to order their food online. And we expect that we'll grow our business by 25%. So what do you do during turbulent times, during difficult times? Increase your revenue. Be creative in your approach to the way you do things. Be creative in the way you do things. Don't do things the same way you have been doing it before. Increase your revenue. Because the business environment has impacted everybody badly. I can tell you, I was listening to one video yesterday. It's a very funny video anyway. I think the wife said, uh, Oni, I think this weekend we need to take the children to go and buy shawarma ice cream. And the husband said, eh, okay. That would not be a bad idea. Also, please note that when we leave there, we are going to go to our tailor so that the children can take measurement. I said, ah, what has tailor got to do with buying ice cream and shawarma? I said, no. Immediately, they begin to drink ice cream and shawarma. They will be thinking of changing their school to public school because they have to go and take measurement. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what are we saying? The same negative situation that is affecting corporations is affecting families. They will cut back on spending. That's the first thing everybody does. You cut down on spending. But as an organization, you must increase your revenue base to stay afloat and to be able to weather the storm. So I've said it. One way to increase revenue 
is to sell online. This gives customers a wider range of products to choose from and make it more convenient for them to purchase items. You can also offer discounts on your existing products or your existing things, what you are selling. Offer discount. This is the time you can, people can get something, some little relief from you. Let them get some little relief from you. Items that are like, you can say buy one, buy two, get one free, buy three, get one free. Let them have some element of the fact that they're having a better day. Have a way to increase your revenue is a means to, stay, to be sustainable in turbulent and difficult times. Keep communication open with your team, with your customers and suppliers. Please, difficult times are times whereby you need to be more open and more transparent in your approach. You are leaders in your respective right. Let the people you are leading continue to inspire confidence in them that we will weather this by sharing information with them Share the information of where the company is going, what next the company is doing. Inspire that confidence in them. Or else, part of the things that makes a company to go down is when the rumor mill is rife because information is not flying. Ah, do, ah. The secretary said yesterday that he had the MD lamenting that he doesn't know whether he will be able to pay salary at the end of this month. He, he might be talking about anything. Now, but this is how it was interpreted to the staff. Uh, the secretary said, yeah, I heard yesterday that this MD was lamenting that he won't be able to pay staff. And I tell, did you know that, did you hear that the MD said the salary of this month is not, is not likely to come? You better let us find our way before it seems as if this... So please, be open to your staff. Let them know. Inspire trust and confidence in them. Let them know that no matter the situation of things, you are, you are doing well. Things are not... You also need to do that for your team, sir. The management team, the MD, the uh, ED, the EDF, and all the top management can be in Abuja chasing budget. And everybody is like, what do we do? We don't even... We can inspire that. That with or without budget, this agency will not go down. We keep communication line open to all our suppliers. Maybe you are owing some suppliers. Let them know that your company is not doing badly. You are going to survive it and going to pay them. I remember there was an incident that happened to us in 2008 when our warehouse got burnt at close eight or seven Elika housing estate. We just bought the goods that day. It was a Saturday morning, 1st of March, 2008. And we have over 40 million Naira goods that went up in flames. They just supplied when this strange fire came from nowhere. And the cold room was burnt. We have chickens, about 10 tons of chicken loaded that got burnt. As the cold room was, was getting burnt, the chicken were being barbecued, ready for eating. And all the goods in the warehouse that the dry stock also got burnt because there was a, a gas explosion. Very strange. The cylinder fell down. And from nowhere, there was a fire not far. Not far and the, the whole thing went up in flames. And not only that, the warehouse was at the back of the house, so the, it got burned, burned the main house where we live, and burned the next neighbor house, a poor widow with five children. So it was an unexpected situation, not planned for. This is what VUCA is all about. It comes suddenly, unplanned for situations. What you never expect, every goods that was supplied was destroyed by that strange fire. And I was in Lagos that morning and they called. They said, ah, sir, this and this and this and what is happening? I said, okay, they should get me a ticket at the airport. I'm taking the next available flight back. And I called back that day. I got back to the airport around 4 p.m. And people gathered. Plenty of people gathered. So I went straight to my widow, I mean to my neighbor, who is a widow. And uh, consult her, I said, ma, please cheer up. And she has all her five children, they are young then, all around her like this, with her landed by her side. And I said, daughter of Zion, cheer up, you shall be well. And I enter into that place, lift up my voice unto heaven, and I gave God quality praise, I sang unto the Lord. And I was coming out of that ashes that were there, the Lord told me, son, in seven days I will rebuild this house. In seven days, I will rebuild this house. And I went to her, I said, the Lord just spoke to me. In seven days, you are going to have a brand new house. 
You know, it's very difficult to move faith of people up when every hope seems to be gone. That is what happened during VUCA time. Hope is fading. But please, I beg you, as families, head of families, principal actors in the family, in your agency and your business, please always keep hope alive. Always keep hope alive. And what did I do? Immediately, we, I told them that. I went to my section, my other side, and uh, everything was born down. And I said, okay, let everybody gather together our staff. Let's give God one hour praise. He has done all things well. And we were like, is this guy normal? With all these losses, is he to sing singing and this thing that is remaining? And my staff that were there were not ready to sing. I said, okay. Because they must have thought about a lot of things. <laughs> the work has ended because where your stock is, is where your strength is in business. Your stock is your strength. You may not have cash. If you have stock, you have strength. So, but when your stock went off and there was nothing else to really rely on, it's like hope is fading. So I said, let's just give God one hour quality praise. And after that, they didn't join me. I started on my own. Forcefully, they joined. And um, after that, I bought minerals for everybody. And somebody came to me and said, sir, CFP, people in Elikaya, they were coming to carry all this. I said, let them carry it. Because it's no longer useful to us. All those barbecue chicken, in, they carried everything away. So on Monday morning, I called all the suppliers that their goods were involved. I let them know that this is the situation of things. But all those invoices, totaling about 40 million, I said, let's keep it by the side. It will be paid for. Keep supplying us new goods. It takes faith for somebody to, you leave the one I've supplied, you say I should continue. What happened to the 2 million, 10 million, 4 million, 5 million that you are owing? So I came through to them. I came open to them. Please, in difficult times, don't hide anything. Come open. Come true. Come true to your suppliers. Come true to your staff. And come true to your customers. If you're having challenges with companies that you are serving, tell them they give you a buffet service to serve, and you don't have chicken. Quickly call them. We may need to replace your chicken with goat meat or with this. You don't because the chicken is not available. Don't pretend all is well so that they don't get disappointed. It's always good that you leave communication open with the people you are dealing with. I know that many of us, even despite that the fact that we are working in an agency, tomorrow we may have one thing or to do to do with the outside world in the area of business. Please, let's keep that line of communication open in challenging times. It will inspire confidence and loyalty in you and in the business. So I call all of them to a meeting. There are about 35 that came for that meeting that morning. And I said, um, I know that you heard what happened. Yes, they said they know. They, have, they commiserated, they did this. None of them offered to say I'm writing off my bill. They only commiserated. <laughs> so after that, I said, don't worry. Between now and September, this thing happened in March, your money will be paid. And we also had a 40 million overdraft facility running with Oceanic. And the same day, my landlord, Chiveke Osfo was my landlord, he called me, he said, Tony, I learned you have burnt my house. I said, no, I didn't burn it. I said, so what? I but the house is burnt. I know you didn't burn it deliberate, but the house is burnt. Yes, I said, the house got burnt. He said, okay. He said, I just want to tell you that that house was sold last week. So they sold a house on my head without knowing. And the man said, he didn't pay for a burnt house. He wants his money back. So you need to refund this money. So you can see so many dynamic challenges that is coming. You are facing challenges from the suppliers. You are facing from the landlord. You are facing from... So many things are happening at the same time. That is why I said, hey, VUCA is a period of uncertainty. It happens in life. It happens in business. You must develop resilience, capacity, based on knowledge and experience to weather through. So immediately, Chive Kios for call me, and I said, sir, there's no problem. He said, well, why he sold the house was that the federal government asked 
all those government officials that are occupying government houses in Ekoyi, Abuja, that they can buy the house. It was about some just time. That they can buy the house. That he sold the house so that he can buy his house in Ekoyi from federal government. And the man that paid for it is saying he didn't pay for a burnt house. He should return the money. I may have paid the federal government the money for my Ekoyi house. So refund the money. So I said, okay. Dad, it was I call him dad. So when do you want this money? He said, eh, very soft-spoken man. Very soft-spoken. I will be coming to Porter Court maybe next week. If I can have like 50% of the money, then we can start from there. That is 11 million because he asked that we sell the house for 22 million. So in one moment, over 100 million was lost. Not anticipated, not planned for, not bargained, which is enough to sink a company. This is the reality we are living in. Please, your resilience as you are working now in NDDC is what will prepare you for certain times in future. Because we can't wish it away, it will always come. We have a president that just make a policy and everything go away. We can have another president tomorrow that will dis decide to decide another thing. We don't know what that one will bring. And at the end of the day, by the time chief came from Lagos, I went, I wrote a check, 11 million on First Bank. How that money come, came? So I gave him the check and the chief laughed. He said, Tony, you know I'm an old man. I said, yes, you're an old man. You can't give me a check and not follow me to bank to cash it. <laughs> Can we go to your bank together so that they can be able to process it in your presence? <sighs> Maybe he thought I gave him a check to pacify him so that he can actually go. He said, where is your branch? I said, it's inside Shell. I said, oh, so please, let's go. So he put me in his car and we drove to Shell. I presented the check. So they asked Chief, will you want this money? Will you want to open an account with First Bank so that we can pay the money to your bank, or you want it cash. Then, there was no limit to what cash somebody can. So immediately they told him that. That was the first time I see Chief smiling. It means that there is a backup. <laughs> so he said they should do a transfer to his own account, so which the bank did. So after that, he prayed for me and he left. He said, I'm coming back in two weeks for the balance. I said, Chief, you can come back. God we make a win. So, but took time to take the customers, the suppliers into confidence. And at the end of the day, they bore, they, they bear with me and were paying them every month with the job. I can tell you by the end of 1988, by the election of Greece, we were able to pay back Oshani Bank 40 million. We were able to pay back all those suppliers were able to pay back that 20, the balance of chief's money. And we ended 1988 debt free. 2008, debt free. And we are still able to post profit that year. Resilience, knowledge, are this, but you know what Bible said? Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. It cannot be wrong. Please, during turbulent time, you don't develop capacity during turbulent time. It's what you develop that will see you through turbulent time. So we survive it, but we're able to gain, we're able to inspire trust and loyalty from our employees, from customers and suppliers, which is essential for weathering the storm. We pay them back between that year. That money did not cross over to the next year. Our customers were able to explain to them and we're able to still service them all through that year without any issues. In fact, we're having a, a job in Cotton Channel for Shell. We're the one managing the offshore platform for Cotton Channel. And we're still able to do all that and without any uh, problem. So please, it's important that during turbulent times, don't hide yourself. Let people see you the way you are. Let people see you the way you are. Have a plan B. 
in case things don't go as expected. Have a plan B. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. When you say we are going to go this way, you sit down, you develop your strategy, you develop your plan, you do all this. Have a plan B and a plan C. If this did not work, let's go to this. If that one did not work, let's go to this. The first thing you have to do as a plan is what do we have to take off? If your business is having cash flow challenges, can we take from bank? Because one thing that you should know is that cash is the oxygen of business. Just the same way air, this O2, I mean the air we're breathing is, the, is, is what sustain life. Cash is what sustain business. A business may survive without customers, but a business cannot survive without cash. There are some people that you don't hear them advertise, and they are doing great business. You won't see cyber. You won't do everything. They might, they might survive. You, one customer is enough. When they sell one product, it's enough to keep them going. It's like people that are in real estate. They don't sell every day. But somebody may sell one building in Banana Island, and the commission he makes, 200 million on a 2 billion era property, can take him on for the next five years. 200 million, cool cash. So what are we saying? You must be able to have a plan B ready. To be able to handle contingency says your marketing, your prayer side to mitigate the damage. If you have a plan to say, okay, uh, we know we're having um, turbulent times, what do we do? You take this step, you take this step, you take this step. It didn't work. What else can we do? Please, don't just have a plan and go to sleep. Because the plan that you have may not be able to see you through. You must be able to have good plans, A, B, or C. I'll be able to stand you in uh, turbulent times. Because, as I've said, what works yesterday may not work today. So, having a plan B means you've already thought about handling contingency sales, marketing and PR strategy to help mitigate the damage. Having a plan can avoid being caught off guard and scrambling for a solution. You must be able to have a, a, a second plan. So, to survive is to analyze your competitor, competition and find ways to stand out. To survive and thrive in challenging times, you must analyze your competition and find ways to stand out from the crowd. One way to do this is to closely examine what your competitors are doing well and identify area you can improve on your own business. What sets you apart? You must be able to com communicate these differences clearly to your target market. What are we saying? If you are in the same business with maybe three, four of you, like us in Polakov, for instance, the major brands are The Promise, The Genesis, Kilimanjaro, and Chicken Republic. We are all just for all others are like they make up the market. But the major players are those four. Now, it is this time around you need to know what your competitors are doing and what they are doing. And how do you do that? You don't need to go there, just go to their website. What are they offering customers? What discount are they offering? What is on their app? You need to monitor your competition closely this time. Then you use what they are doing and improve on what they are doing to get a larger, I mean, access to, I mean, uh, both their customers and your customers. You try as much as possible to do something better than what they are doing. So analyze your competitions and always find ways to stand out. There are some of your products that are like your, what you want to call a star product. Keep promoting it. Keep giving that discount on those. There are, for instance, our my mind, for instance, our ice cream, our pastries. They are like second to none. They are like our star product, our chicken and rice. People will tell you, ah, you may not have this uh, big ambience, but this product, nobody can beat it. For company like us, we emphasize on that because we know that we have an advantage over our competition in those areas. So what do you do as a businessman? Know what your competitions are doing. Don't just go to your cocoon, cocoon yourself and say, let's just continue to struggle and pray and weather it out. It's not enough. We should not bury our head in the sand like an ostrich and thinking that uh, the bad time will just go away like that. 
Let's please see what you can do to outdo your competition. I've said this before. I said keep track of your finances and cut costs where possible. This is critical. This is critical. I was to go for a wedding in Cancun, Mexico, and I asked the ticket agent, how much is the ticket, business class? They say it's eight million, and I know I've never paid more than 3.4 million, three million to the US. Eight million this time around. It's not left for me to say, what will be the impact of this eight million on my business? Why can't I give the person one million? and stay in Nigeria than spending eight million on tickets. So I was trying to now cajole my children and say, ah, can we go together? Because if I know I go with my children, they will pay for accommodation in the hotel in Mexico in dollars. So I'm trying to weigh a lot of things. This is the time to mind how you spend money. Even if you are very rich, please mind how you spend money now. All this Ashwebi stuff, put it on hold for now. All you need to ask for is the color of the day. If you check your wardrobe, there is no color that is not in your wardrobe, especially our women. And for men, just wear anything white. Put any cap on top of it. They won't turn you back. But it's not the time that, ah, you know it's my best friend. And It's not time for sentiment. It's time to mine our expenses. It's one thing that will make you to survive this turbulent and uncertain time. Mine every kobo. We are so sentimental when it comes to things like, uh, you know, he's our family friend. I need to read. And why? The last time they said, okay, it is um, golden yellow with fushi pink. Just go to your wardrobe. Look for which one is golden yellow. If it's not golden, buy the yellow. Use the yellow. You will see, I mean, blend with the people. It's important, and for men, please, don't worry about this. Just wear white and put cap on top of it. It's, it solves the problem. So please, keep close eye on your business finances. It's more important than ever. More important than ever when you want to survive in the VUCA world. It's more important than ever that you keep your eyes on your finances. We know that our resources are finite. Let me also tell you, even for businessmen, even for businessmen, for everyone that is seated here, you know what to expect at the end of the month from government. But no businessman can say, I made 10 naira last month, I'm going to make 10 naira this month. There is so much uncertainty concerning it. So much uncertainty containing it. Your situation and your case is better. You can plan because you know what to expect. It. We can't plan because we don't know what we're coming. We, we take what we see. So we try as much as possible to be able to be realistic when we are taking decision on what to buy. It's good to help friends celebrate. I know that I'm not saying we should not celebrate with those people that are wedding or they are doing baby dedication or they are getting married or they are opening their house. Is good. Let rejoice. The Bible says we should rejoice with them that are rejoicing. But what I'm saying in essence is that one couple was wedding. Air, air ticket. I'm supposed to fly from Lagos, I mean, Podakot to Lagos, Lagos to Ilorin, because driving on the road now, you get a CB. It's part of the, the season we are in. So, ticket to Lagos rose from 70, 80,000 to one round 40 something thousand. Ilorin rose from, because Ilorin is 30 minutes flight from Lagos to Ilorin, rose from about um, 60 to about uh, one round 21, 30, and to come back. So I called the person. Ah, and they are like asking for, you know, support for the wedding, what we used. I said, do you really need me at this wedding? <laughs> Do you really need me? Because I'm thinking of sending you like about hundred to 200,000. I said, oh, don't bother to come. If I we don't want to stress you. <laughs> we don't want to stress you. We know you are a very busy person. <laughs> Mel and Brethren, this is the time to give the people options. 
Ah, not that it's my um, family. If I'm not there, not, if you are not there, the wedding will still take place. <laughs> but we are so fixated, we are so sentimental in our approach to things. It's good to go, but if your money can close the gap and you are spending less, please let the money close the gap and you spend less. In fact, they will be more happier that you didn't come, but the money came. Now you've been there and after dancing and eating their food, you spread them like about 20,000 and you turn back. So please, it's important you should be aware of every pony coming and going out of business and see how you can cut your expenses. The same thing with our feeding in the house. It comes from the house. The gas, a kg of gas now is about 1,200 per kg. Okay, so 1,005 1, per kg. You used to feed 12.5 kg, 2,000, but today 12.5 kg is about 15,000. 17,000. 17, so what do you do? If you said, okay, I'm going to use uh, electric. <laughs> no, never. So, so even if there is light, the kilowatt has changed. So I'm trying to, I mean, share all this scenario with us that this is where we need to be more strategic in our thinking, even to our, down to our own. Like in the promise, for instance, when we look at the price of gas, we said, okay, get charcoal. We now have um, this charcoal stove outside. And it doesn't smoke at all. It doesn't smoke. And you just put your things there. And before you know it, what you are doing is done. So, you may not have that kind of environment that is open to do what you are doing, but there are things we can also do to cut down on our energy expenses. So, let's just be critical in minding every cobo that comes in and that goes out. This is not the time for frivolities. This is the time for reality. Let's just be able to face it. Ah, as a business, please. Invest in marketing and promotion to reach new customers. It's important you don't leave yourself with the number of customers you have. Get new customers. Pay for some uh, little, little money on Facebook, on Instagram to boost your product. Reach more other people. I tell people, I said, many of us here, yes, I know that you are technocrats, but one or two of us have businesses that we are doing by the side. It's commendable. Let everybody that you know in the world know what you are doing. So that tomorrow, if you shift base from NDDC to your business, they won't be asking you, ah, is that what you are doing? We didn't know. You already seamlessly transit from paid employment to business. And you are calling all your customers. The only thing is that you are going to be getting new one. So during this kind of time, your church people should be able to know what you are doing. I remember when we opened the promise at MMA2 um, in 2007, and none of the airlines accept to use MMA2 except Aero. Aero Contractor was the only airline that accepted to use MMA2. Arik said no. All other airlines said no because the charges on MMA2 was high. But because Aero was providing corporate services to Shell, corporate services to all these oil companies, they were ready to pay the charges, and they were able to pay the charges. So they were the only one using it. And Aero was the darling of uh, customers from this portal court to that place. So we went to MMA2, and we opened. And immediately we opened in MMA2 in the food court, where we have our brand established. He got to, I was a deacon then, 2007. So we opened. I knew that majority of people that fly Aero are from this Niger Delta place, and this is where the brand is. So what did I do? At the deacon's board like this, where all the big boys in Winner's Chapel are seated, I say I want to give testimony. I have testimony, I have testimony. Men and brethren, use what you have to promote what you do. This is your constituency. Let them know. So they asked me, they said, ah, 
Deacon Toya, then I was not a pastor. So they say, ah, one of our deacons has testimony. Let us hear him. So they clap him for me. They say, your time for your testimony. So when they gave me the I said, praise, 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 praise the Lord. And I said, hallelujah. I said, it will be, it will, it's glad in my heart to let you know that the promised falsehood has opened at MMA2 in, the, in Lagos. Ah, all of them clap and everything. That was a means to pass a message. I can tell you 75% of the customers that we have, from that 2007 to 2012, they are from the Niger Delta region. They identify with it, they patronize it. Because it's the brand they knew. Please let people know what you do. In turbulent times, they are the people that will not leave you. One, there is a relationship. You buy things from people you like. You patronize people that you like. When you are doing business with people, you do business with people that you like. That is the rule of business. That is why there are so much cry when our brother passed on. Last weekend was the burial of Abbot Wige. You can see the number of people that cried. You can see the number of people that were pained by the death of one man. And many of them left their businesses, left their offices to be at that barrier. It was like a carnival. Why? They were doing, they missed a friend that they were doing business with. They were not related in any way to Abbott, but business over time. Has. So you need to know your customer. You need to inspire loyalty in your customers. And you need to ensure that you get new, you reach out to new potential customers, reminding existing one of the value your business offer, and what you can you do to help keep your company top of mind and ensure a steady stream of revenue. So this is important. It's customer that bring the money. Please get new customers. And I think should be, this should be the last slide, or the second to the last. Review your business operation regularly and make changes as needed. Ah, your business is not immune to the effect of a downturn economy. No business is immune against this. If you want to find out, check what happened during COVID. Every business shut down. No business is immune to a downturn economy. No business. So, you need to keep reviewing your strategies of staying afloat. You need to be able to see and know what to do to keep your business going so as to weather the storm. So what do you do? You review your strategies. You review your business plan. You review your expansion plan. You review your this, you review your that. Top management must be on top of their strategies to keep afloat in turbulent times. Why are so many businesses died? Now, I wanted to share an experience with you concerning the MD of Nokia. Our president espoused that to us during the last um, first AGM of Institute of Strategic Management we had in Abuja in February. He said Nokia MD, the day the, the, the company was being taken over by Microsoft, the MD made a very vital statement. He said, we didn't do anything wrong, yet we lost. That's Nokia. We didn't do anything wrong, yet we lost. And I began to, and I went back after that statement to look at what Nokia did wrong that Microsoft has to swallow it. A, a brand that was number one in the, in the telecom and in the phone business because there was nobody that was not using Nokia. The like of Apple, the like of um, Samsung, they were just coming to the market when Nokia was already rainy. They have a particular brand that was so popular, 3310. Everybody that graduated to Apple today that graduated to Samsung today, we all use 3310. I don't know whether we know that phone. Eh? And we know the strength of Nokia in the phone market. We, 
we know the strength of Nokia in the phone market. They may not be number one. They were not far from the first three in the world. Because around that time, we have the like of Motorola. We have the like of Nokia, Ericsson. But you can discover that among the, those brands that time, Nokia stood out. And the MD said, the day he wept bitterly with his management team, he said, we didn't do anything wrong, but yet we lost. And why? People will wonder. They were so fixated on their business plan that when the man that owns Techno today came and said, look, let's develop a phone that can use dual SIM card. He said, no, it's not our way. It's not what we want to do. Techno came first to meet Nokia, sir. That is why you must continue to review your business plan. You must continue to review and digest and review and the man, the Nigerian man that owns Techno today, the first point of call because going to China was to Nokia. I said, your phone is popular. Can you do it in such a way that we can have two SIMs inside the phone? They said, no, it's not necessary, it's not feasible. He said, where we have the market is Africa. And I can tell you, apart from America and, and China, the greatest place where phone is sold in the world is Nigeria and African countries. If you get to other countries, Onibo doesn't mind the kind of phone they carry. They don't carry phone for status. They carry phone for functionality. It's in Nigeria that want to carry a phone and want everybody to see it. And when they ask you, they first of all do the hand like this. Hello? They want people to see. It's about status thing. So, but Oibo doesn't matter. He will tell you I'm be pressing his uh, touch phone. As long as he can answer, if you check Warren Buffett, go and see the phone he's using. His touch, I mean, his uh, button phone. But he's fucking. So, what am I saying is that by the time they took that SIM, the SIM options to, to Nokia, Nokia refused to accept to change. Please, Review your business. Make changes when necessary. And timely. And timely. And timely. Make those changes when necessary and timely. That will move you above, far above your competitors. So this, our brother, just went to China and told the Chinese people, design a phone that can use two SIMs. The China, and he called it Techno. Men and brethren today, Techno is a brand in the market that is so strong. From Techno, he developed Infinix. From Infinix, there are other things that this man, eh? So, I tell, so you discover that from one brand, he was able to segment the market. This one will go for this class. This one will go for this class. This one will go for this class. So what are we saying? Don't be fixated on one way of doing things. Or be open-minded in accommodating changes that will make for growth in your business. Because it's a strategy that will help you to survive turbulent times. By the time Nokia was bought for about $8 billion then, I think $8 or $16 billion by Microsoft, when Nokia wants to buy their phone back, their company back, they only pay Microsoft $1 billion. So Microsoft, to them, Microsoft is the one that lost from 16 billion to 1 billion because that's what they pay Microsoft back. But Nokia was the eventual loser because they never been able to get back to the market like before to today. The like of Apple and the like of Samsung has taken over the market. So please, review your business operation regularly and make changes as needed. Make changes as needed. This may mean streamlining. This may mean streamlining your production process, cutting back on non but or reducing your workforce. So, also use technology to drive your business. Use technology to drive your business. And begin to substitute those things. Uh, uh, cut. There is a company in America during COVID. The MD came to them. The business was struggling. And the man could not have the heart to lay off the workers. 
There was no income coming in again. He does not have the heart. So he called all of them and told them, he said, at this time, I cannot tell you to go, I cannot tell you to go, I cannot tell you to go. So we all remain, but we will be without salary for the next few months. But anybody that can stay, cannot stay, should please, and they begin to weep. Now, what am I saying? You don't need to throw in the towel and pass the buck to the staff. What can you do differently to keep the business going? That is why it's important that you review your business operation regularly. That if this extreme situation happens, what do we do? Like what we did in Lagos. We have looked at the extreme situation. If shares stop us today, are we supposed to close up and be coming back? No. Let's do something different. Please learn to review your operation. Thank you very much. God bless you. Wow. I took more than. Pastor Tony Alabi directly, and I'm sure you will have some answers to you. Or their comments, please, can we check them quickly? Because unfortunately, your food is not ready, so you better stay in the class before the. So, any questions, please? Yes. Pastor, there are questions for you, please. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this presentation. It's indeed a booster. It's a challenging one. It's a wake-up call. It can be termed to be a direction for us, especially we in the um, civil service. The need to know that we're in turbulence time, therefore we need to think outside the box. I really have gained a lot from what you have said, and especially when you are relating business to family. Because sometimes we forgot that we make excess expenses in our families. We think of the business aspects alone. So the strategy to cut down expenses, they are all very commendable and realistic. So I appreciate all what you have done and presented to us. We've learned a lot from what you've said. How to, you must keep your in, increasing your income. What you did when you had to increase your income, all that. And a lot I've learned. I'm sure we have all learned from you today what to do in turbulence time. We appreciate that. I just want to ask, um, did, have you considered uh, as part of what to do in turbulence time, going to the stock exchange, like the, the promise going to the stock exchange, the promise opening your business up for people to get involved as a way of buying shares, as one of the ways to even keep your financial flows coming and don't you think that will make you to be further committed in your business and be more serious about your business consider you have more shareholders and you need to make money for yourself and make money for them it will also open you up to more um, outlet you end up you may end, end up having more outlets and the rest so why have you not considered the promise going to stock exchange having shares available having partnership maybe some of us with some floating funds can partner with you also and then we can secure our funds and then we know that sometimes we'll have profit. Why are you not thinking in this uh, direction? Thank you. Thank you very much. Going to Nigerian Stock Exchange is a very good option to actually weather the storm in turbulent times. It's a two-edged sword. Um, and I will cite one case. At the height of Tantalizer as a business, they went to the stock exchange. They didn't survive it. The brand died. Well, I, don't let me say he died. He's struggling today. He's not yet dead. He's not dead. You know why? Nigerian Stock Exchange is a very dynamic market. The rules are different. 
if you are to keep the rules of Nigerian Stock Exchange as a businessman, you want to be honest with it, you can't survive it. They want openness, they want transparency. They want everything done, your books, your deeds are open and everything. It's not bad. But where your margin and profit is low, you won't be able to cope with those demands. The fast food market has large patronage, but the return is not like when you are selling cement. It's not like the banks. Now, for the promised fast food, what we did was to have some partnership, strategic partnership with some individuals that have fund. I want to have I want to have something to do when I retire. Or I want to have an office, but I want something that I can be getting, I can live my comfortable life that I'm living now when I'm out of the system. Can I buy a franchise for this X amount? Then it was 50 million when the inflation and the turbulent times have not taken over the country. 50 million. And we just put it by the side. Every month, there is no way that outlet will not give you 2 million naira. There is no way. The worst of location will give you 1 million, 1 1.5. The worst of location. But when we get the location right and it's well located, you make between two to three million. There are some athletes that are declaring five million net profit every month. There are some that are doing two million. There are some that are doing one million. The location is what determines what comes out of it. So we always ask the person. Some people said, if I leave Port Harcourt today, I may not want to retire in Port Harcourt. I want to retire in Oweri. I want to retire in Enugu. I want to have something I can be doing. It's also possible for you to put a business in a strategic locations that five years to come, six years to come, by the time you are retiring, you have something to look onto. So we have that kind of arrangement. In fact, that was the kind of arrangement we had with RSSDA in 2009. We signed off with RSSDA in 2009. They have a lot of reverse uh, entrepreneurs that they trained, and they didn't actually know what to do with them after the training. So we step in as a partner. All these people, we can actually take them. You have done their training. You have trained them. Faith Foundation trained them for them. You have trained them, but you don't know what to do with them. So why can't we set up the promise outlet in each local government where all these people come from? Let them go there and own it. Let them work in it, gain catering experience. Subsequent catering, we want to train. We use all these facilities to train them. You don't need to send them to catering school. And they bought into it. And the group from Omok, seven of them, you go and manage uh, Omok outlet. You go and manage Auda. The people from uh, L I mean, um, um, LLA, we, that local government, Isiopo, we have another one was there, Bori, that is Kana local government. The one for Onega, the one for, just like that. I will begin to set up all these outlets in all those locations. Now, one strange thing that happened was that where we think we don't have money, there are more money in those communities than even what we get in Port Harcourt. Maybe because the competition was limited. Because what we are making in Omok, no outlet in Port Harcourt was making it. What they are making in Auda, no outlet was making it. So the government was able to achieve three things at a time by doing that. They are able to put their people in employment. They are able to have business people that these seven people own this. And in two years, they were able to settle each of those beneficiaries with three, three million to go and start their business. So 21 million profit from that business was able to settle seven, seven I mean, they were given three, three million for seven people to go and start their business. So from the experience they have, some of them went and said, okay, I've learned how to do cake. I've learned how to cook. I've learned how to fry rice. I've learned how to do my mind. Let me set up my own and employ one or two people. So there is a dominant effect on uh, the initiative by RSSD. In fact, today, the only business that remains as an RSSD legacy is the Promise Initiative, the Franchise Business Initiative of the Promise. That is the only thing that is standing in Omok, in Aouda, in Bori, in Elele, and in Eleme today. So what am I saying is that we have that kind of partnership. We also propose the same partnership to NDDC. It was accepted that we should have it in all the nine Niger data states. Mizawi is there. 
My madam is here. All those things were structured, it was published, it was done, everything was done. By now, we're supposed to have them in all the nine Niger Delta states. But bureaucracy and change of leadership has really make it to really um, be slowed down. Because what we've done is that if we have it in Delta, if we have it in Edo, you begin to send people to go and learn directly from them, practical. Then the promise will just facilitate one week classroom on entrepreneurship, on bookkeeping, on this, on this, before you release them and you empower them and you settle them. For individual that wants to really buy the franchise of the promise, it's, it's available, it's possible. But going to the um, Nigerian Stock Exchange may, did not work for tantalizers because, and it has really brought down the brand. If you check their shares today, it's not up to one naira for tantalizer, and nobody is buying because it affected the business, it affects the management. They don't know what to do it or even pull out of the stock exchange today. Because I went and engaged with the woman. Why is the brand struggling? And she said to me, the stock exchange is not what we expect that we came back with. So most of the big business, if you ask yourself, why is MTN not listed on Nigerian stock exchange? They've refused to be listed. Why is Airtel not listed? These are big businesses. But they did private placement that was oversubscribed. And they returned people's money to them when it was oversubscribed. They know what they are doing. So instead of us to go into Nigerian Stock Exchange to raise funds, we rather look for people that are thinking about having additional income or looking to a future of retirement, whereby I have my office here, I can be doing my business, maybe a consultant, and I'm still getting money. I'm not paying for rent. I'm not paying for this. I'm not paying for that. And I'm still running my environmental consultancy from here. People can identify and know that this is my address. We are entertaining that kind of people. I want to continue to promote that kind of relationship. We have many people that are in Shell, in Total, that have bought this franchise. In fact, we're in the process of concluding one with a man from Boni. He said, we have one in King Perikulim. He wants one in Finima. Because people from Finima have to leave Finima to go to Boni, King Perikule, to go and patronize. He said he wants one. He's a share guy. That is what we are working on now. So you can have it. One good thing about it is that it can fail, especially if you get the location right. Three factors make for success in fast food. Number one is location. Number two is location. Number three is location. When the location is right, when the location is right, the business is right. If your location is wrong, no matter how good food you sell, you won't, you won't sell. The number one is the location. If you are doing quality food and your word is not accessible, nobody will come there. If you, are doing if, you are, if you are doing good food and the security of the people are not guaranteed, nobody will come there. So that's why location is a number one consideration. Thank you very much. There is another question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. This class is something to shout about. Thank you. I, my question is this. When you want to delve into business, people will always advise you, like that was a training I attended, that it's always important for you to partner with somebody to start in a business. Will it be out of place if you have your own capital to drive the business to conclusion. Thank you, sir. Okay, capital is not enough. Building resilience from beginning is key. Because you start today your business, one month, two months, there is changes in the economy, both in the micro and the macro economy strata. What do you do? Your capital won't survive it. It will even dry up. So why did they say you should do um, you should be able to partner with somebody. Naturally, you don't need to partner. What is important after your vision is to go and get knowledge. Now, I remember when Shandis wanted to take off. Shandis is a fast food that operated for about 10 years. They opened at um, Aba Road, Old Aba Road. They opened another one at Rumodara. They opened another one at Ajip Road. Three of them, Shandis. But when the husband to Shandis is my personal friend. He's a banker. He came, he said, Mr. Alabi, uh, my wife wants to open a fast food. I said, no. 
I won't let her go and start. They have the money. I said she will come and work six months in the promise. And he will work in different departments. He's the MD or he's the CEO. But he will come with her jeans and her top and will give her apron. <laughs> to be able to first of all understand the need. There is a secret in every business. Money cannot see a business survive. Man. Money can never see a business survive. So what do you do? When Madame came, I went and introduced her to HR, to the finance manager to the HR manager, to the head of audit, to the HSC manager, to this. We had a meeting. I said, a new child is about to be born, and we are going to take delivery. We are the nurse. The people in this room are the nurse that we give back to this baby. This baby must not die in our hand in the course of delivery. So what we do, my madam, the madam is here, now, let me say one thing, too, while I, I accepted to do that for the benefit of us that are here today. An Englishman will always say, one good turn deserves another. In 2002, when there was no bank that was ready to support the promise to take off, we were, need, we were just looking for one million naira. When we paid for our agri road, and to every bank where I have friends, when I go there, Remy, please now, just give me one minute. Ah, Tony, our bank don't support starters. Just go and start first. When we see how you are doing, we come. Okay, I go to my friend and assist, please now. And just one million. Ah, your security is weak. Because we don't have anything to really back up the loan. Okay, I come to my brother. What can you do? Ah, stories. It was this bank, Trans International Bank from Ibadan, where that man was the manager that was ready to stake 1.5 million naira on us. So that was the time when, when, the, when, the, when they saw the, the madam was selling cloth, she goes to Swiss to buy Swiss lace, Swiss brocade, and everything. And that was the shop she has. But she never liked trading, she likes food because that's, that's her passion. So when it was time for her to, she discussed with the husband that this is my passion and this is what I want to do. Once again. I know where I will carry you. I won't also allow you to start this business without having an interface with Mr. Labi. So that's why they brought her. So no matter how much money you have, take time, three months, six months to learn it. Why did our ego brother succeed in business? This apprenticeship scene. That is why they succeed in business. You won't see any Yes, you may not understand how they make all those big, big money, but you will see that it is a system that has succeeded over years. Harvard initiated a research into why they have done well in apprenticeship to, to propose it as a model. And you know what Igbos does is what the Jews also do. They take their children through the same process, no matter your education, they are pulling you back after your education and you are starting from the cashier to the cleaner to the end until you are able to do that. So no matter how much cash you have, anything you want to do, go to somebody that is already doing well. Lay your cash on the table. Please give me an employment. Even if you don't pay me. Even if you don't pay me. Just give me an employment. Let me understand what you are doing. You are doing a great work. We appreciate the great work you are doing. Just give me an opportunity to work here because I have the mind to be able to also do something like what you are doing. For anyone that fear God and that also want development and growth of order, there is nobody that will say no. I've done that not just for Shandis. I did it for so many other people. So Shandi came first month. She was in the kitchen. She was working with them. 6 a.m. She must be there. 6 a.m. Because you need to do the money production. And she will not close till 6 p.m. So she was there for one month. This is a married woman, her children, they are rich. But because of what she wants to learn and do, you need to know how to do it. Because what you don't know, when you start, whatever they tell you is what you will take. If they say they use one butter to produce five meat pie, you cannot query, how can you use one bucket of butter, 10 kg, to do 10 meat pie? You say, it's okay. 
So that's why after that she went to the store to understand what store management. How does it come in and go out? If anything goes out of the stock, how, what, how does it translate to Naira and Kobo? Then after that, she went to finance. How do you do your budgeting every week? How do you do this budgeting plan? How do you implement it? Then from there, she went to recruitment. That's HR department. At the end of the day, six months down the line, she was ready to go. And when she was going, I called somebody from Lagos to be a consultant to help her out. So the first outlet they are very close to share was an instant boom. Instant boom. Instant success. And that was what gave them the opportunity to do second, they did third. Now they have gone back home to Ibadan. That's why they sell all those three. They've gone back to Ibadan to run. The, the husband said, look, I'm growing old. I'm 60 and above. Let's go home. And they now have one outlet in Badan, which they retire on, and they are doing well. So money is not enough, man. Resilience is important. So please don't let this food confuse you. Ask this question now, because after now, I don't know which class that you're going to ask. It. Please. You have a question? No, my question is, why are you not asking questions? <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. I, I think that's all right. Are we set with the food? All right, so let's do the closing formalities and then. Yeah, we are done for the day. It's a quick one. Yes. But uh, please, I want to advise us tomorrow, as much as possible, even if it rains, let's try and be here on time so that we can close early. It's a Friday, so you can go home. And don't forget, uh, we're having a class with uh, Mr. Alex Ndudi and Ebeli, a pre-retirement class that's uh, planning retirement scenarios. You know, depending on individuals, there are very different modes, different businesses, or different kind of uh, operations that you might consider after retirement. And for most of us, we are nearing that time. So it's important for us to be, uh, be part of that class. And then there's also a class for managing your health and social retirement. So those, these two classes tomorrow, very important. So I wouldn't want us to miss it for anything. All right, let's rise to our feet as we take the closing formalities. Any questions? No questions. On the count of uh, three, we take the opening pr uh, closing prayers. Circumstance of the National Anthem. One, two, go. Oh God of creation, Direct our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youth there to, to know, in love and honesty, to grow and live in just and true. Great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. The faith force. We see no limit to what we can. We see no limit to what we can do. We see no limit to what we can have because we see no limit to the power of God. We see no limit to the power of our mind, and we see no limit to the power in the word of God. Thank you very much, and God bless. Please, uh, we will let the facilitator take his meal if he's uh, going to do that, and then the directors, deputy directors, and all of that. Uh, you know your uh, your directors. Uh, you know.